Uh, you are the gift of your ancestors. You you have all of their ashe from the accumulated generations. It's in you. You have those gifts in you from them. It's brought into your person through your destiny, through your DNA. You have it. Now, you can cut yourself off from them. You could cut yourself off from those gifts. But what Ifa does in particular is that he helps you find them by fi figuring out who you are, who you've reincarnated as, a tonwa, the latest version of you. This is how he helps you get back in touch with those ancestral gifts, which you actually gave to yourself. Because you're just them being reborn and you you ask for this life that you have to extend what you did in a previous incarnation. Okay. So in the mention to Shango is that uh two uh Orishas are prominent in in this Odu. Well, actually three. Uh Arumila, because this is Rosun is Arumila's Odu. Okay. He comes out of a Rosum, uh, Chango, and then Oya. It's Oya is at home in Osa. Okay. Uh, if you look at the marks, the double lines are in the female spot. Males are in the male spot. They represent the straight way. Like everything's in alignment. So that's why it's associated with Ifa because Irosu means alignment, like you're going in the alignment. And that's what uh, Ifa's thing is, where the, the beings who should be in the top part, the males are aligned properly, and then the females are aligned properly. Alignment. Now, when they're reversed, that means something else. Osa uh, represents Oya, particularly one thing, uh, market. The, the double line at the top represents uh, uh, kind of like a, a stationary thing, but then it represents collective, like moving around with the other marks, or well, vice versa. It could, the double mark can mean collective, and then the single marks mean like activity. So it means collective activity, like marketing, like you everybody's trading money in this sense. Double lines also mean physical things like um, money, uh, items that you sell, goods, even services is represented by the double line. Single line means it's moving around. Okay, and so when you, it gives an image of a market, as well as a tornado. We, that's another thing. There's a lot of imagery in Osa as well. Mm -hmm. The double Dang. line, double line at the top, represents like if you look at a tornado, the the expansion of the uh, the uh, the clouds, but then the single line represents them woven into a tight string. That you see coming out of the tornado as as it's moving so it represents tornadic activity yeah and i i feel like so many people you know i did this um expo and i did a cacao ceremony that was earlier in the day on that sunday and a lot of the people that i ended up talking to one-on-one -on -one and because just so you know guys with my gift I am an ancestor medium. So when I sit down with people, it's usually their ancestors showing me what they did in the past that is specific to the person that is sitting in front of me. So for instance, uh, one of the ladies, she was running away from her gift, Baba. She had this, uh, she, she was a psychic. She had this really elemental connection. And so as soon as I sat down, I saw one of her ancestors who was like this chief 
uh, doctor, you know, shaman, female shaman, and she was sitting up high on this rock with feathers and she was communicating and she was like the, the healer. And so I'm talking to this woman who actually possesses these skills. And then she was like, but I'm afraid like the Western society has made ancestry evil. I was watching this video earlier today with Queen Afua and she was talking about tapping into the ancestors, this, that, and the other. And then someone in the comments were like, y'all need to stop worshiping dead ancestors. And I'm like, oh, it's so... I, it's so frustrating to me. And I feel like that's why we're so lost because it's not about worshiping dead ancestors. It's not even about worshiping. I don't worship my ancestors. What I do is I work with my ancestors. I see what area needs elevation and what areas of my DNA code also need to be expressed. And I think so many, we, we're so cut off from nature, we're so cut off from spirit, and we're so in our ego and in our bodies that when we look into the mirror, all we see is an individual, when in fact, our bodies are made up of DNA. And I tell people, you ain't made your own DNA. Your DNA came from the people who were before you. And I ran into this quote uh, not too long ago that I thought was so relevant for tonight. Our bodies hold the suffering of our ancestors, but it also holds their gifts and wisdom. So when we're looking in this life, what should I do? What is my purpose? How should I express myself? You know, da, 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 and all of the things that so many of my clients struggle with. And Baba, I know in your readings, it's the same way. And sometimes I'm like, you got to look inside because your DNA code, literally, yes, there's some things that need to be cleared, but your DNA code literally holds the future to everything that you want to manifest, Baba. Absolutely. It's all there. Like, like Neo in the Matrix. See, those machines were only able to, to control Neo when he was out of touch with who he was. See, that's the whole point of the matrix is to get you to not be in touch with your with who you are, which is your ancestral lineage. You are that lineage. You are the product of that lineage. You are them. And to address the woman who said you were worshiping dead answer, the first thing is nobody's dead. That's what she, she's She's got a, a fallacy that when, when Euros and others came to Africa for the first time and they observed what they thought were funerals, so oh, they're having a funeral for this dead person. When they, when they approached the Africans and told them, oh, this person's dead, it, you know, when did they die? They, they, said, they didn't understand them because they were, in many African languages, there's like not a word for dead. There's a word for move on to the next world. There's a word for elevate, but nobody in terms of African traditional understanding, there isn't an African society that believes people die. There's not a single one. None of them do. And you could go far back as ancient Kemet, and it's the same thing. Absolute understanding that you go on to another life, and that life is always and like forever connected to this life. The two cycles are the same, okay? Birth and then going back there and then coming back. It's it's connected, two sides of the same coin. Uh, nobody believed in this. And as far as worshiping goes, that's another fallacy. Our tradition was not about worshiping the spirits. It was about using them as an example so you could elevate your spirit. And it wasn't about becoming or worshiping the gods. It was about becoming one of the gods. You know, they, so they, they got worship twisted. From the missionaries. Right. They, yeah, they, they, they never got it right. They, they wanted, they came to Africa, they saw all of this wonder and grandeur, all this, all this building. They wanted to emulate the tradition and claim it for themselves and whatever. 
but they, they would never, they, they didn't stay in school enough to really learn what it was really about. And, and they never took an interest in our language to understand what we were saying. Because if they understood what we were saying, they could say, they, they could have seen that we were calling ourselves elevated spirit or even the gods. That was the, how we addressed each other, you know, as a God. You are male God. You are female God. The Netters are people. The Orisha are people that elevate to a certain level. And then they become the Orisha of that land. If, if their elevation reaches high enough, like Shango, Obatala, Oshun, all of them were people. Orumila, people. They even know where Orumila's house is. Mm-hmm. In uh, Tashi Hills, right? Tashi Hill. It's still there. He has relatives. The Orisha are your ancestors. They're your they ancestors. Are- and, you know, for so many people, what I tried when uh, I was having a conversation, I had an event last Thursday and I had a VIP and uh, the people who signed up for the VIP, one of the people that was there, she w- it was interesting because when I was giving her energy system a reading, her feet came back where her feet were off. And so come to find out it's because she's been afraid to really step into her. There's that thing again, fear, the little death that brings about obliteration. You know, she was afraid to fully step into Ifa tradition into because she's she's in it, but she's not fully in it. She's not dedicated. And she was like, well, I don't want to get into it. And then my aunt, because I'm not disciplined in my ancestors. And then the Arisha will be hard on me. And I'm like. It doesn't really work like that. I was like, you know, Arisha are really here to serve us. They are really frequencies and uh, different consciousness, even in the name, the selected head or Re and Sha, the selected head. These are frequencies in which when we are born, we actually pop into 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 whatever that frequency is so that we can better understand it so that we can better be able to come and i was like if anybody gonna get on your ass it's egg bay not ancestors i was like egg bay are there to kind of push you and get you to do things and bring you that contraction but your ancestors and the arisha are really there to serve you to help you elevate into your greatness you never have to be afraid uh, of one of them coming to whoop your ass, it, it doesn't even work like that. Mm-hmm. No, they, they, I've heard that same statement from others that uh, they don't want to, let's say, uh, show uh, like a lack of commitment and they don't want the reach coming down on them. So they're going to step away from the tradition. But the, in reality, you were born that way. You could only step away from yourself. Not and sure. that's not really stepping away, you know. That's that's cutting off your reality, internally and externally. So, uh, this is the tradition because this is nature. This is the spiritual nature of our reality on Earth, for ourselves, for the world. You can't step out of it, even if you, let's say, pass. To you're, you're still in it. Right. Matter of fact, in in a lot of, in a lot of ways, Yoruba tradition in itself says you're more alive in what we call the spirit world than this world. And like the the old do, uh, I believe it's Ajay Agbe says the world is a marketplace. Heaven is your true home. The world is a marketplace. Heaven is your true home. That's for everybody. Good, bad, right, left, male, female. And to get you to separate yourself from that reality is usually the work of, of those that, that want to control and, 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 and enslave the world. Because they really don't have any power over you. 
Ori was given the power of, of manifesting, co-manifesting reality. The Ori that sits on top of your shoulders was given that power over earth, air, fire, and water by Ola Damari. Ori was. Ori is the real power on earth. So if I says subscribe to Ori, know who you are, know how you came, what you came here for. And that will be the determining factor of your happiness and your success. And most people ask for a happy life. So aligning with your destiny means you're aligning with all the happiness that you ask for yourself. This is what you got to do. First, you got to go back to yourself. You got to embrace your ancestors who can see farther than you and who have not died. Don't listen to, you know. These outside voices and these religions that are really, you know, the one issue that I have with the Abrahamic traditions is their, their intent to focus on separation when we really are here to unify. This is about us first unification of ourself. And with this Irosu Osa, you know, that that first reunification happens within the body. And we even see these, there's a reason why the bottom three chakras that you have to work on first are your, your chakras that keep you grounded here. Even I think most everyone knows, I also follow the words of Yahshua ben Yosef as his true message within the ASEAN gospel. And the ASEANs, as well as Yahshua, talked a lot about how you can't even get to the heavenly father until you start working with the earthly mother, working with the clay, working with the body. And the ancestors are a part of that. So again, as because I do want to spend a little bit time on the relationship part of, of what we have to be focused on this year, because I think there's a lot to be said here. As we are finishing, ancestors are not to be worshipped ancestors. And I think that's why a lot of people within the ancestral tradition are still suffering and not really seeing the results that you want to see. It's not about ringing a bell and giving your ancestors libations and all of that. All of that is great. That's a part of it to show appreciation for the things that they do. However, ultimately we are in a reciprocal partnership with our ancestors. They need us just as much as we need them. It is a soul contract of working together. We, Baba said it earlier, how, you know, we chose it, right? And I, I, I try to always tell people with these four bloodlines that run into you, some of these bloodlines, they're all here to balance each other, right? Your father's bloodline, there's something in your father's bloodline that's here to balance out or cool out something in your mom's line. And your mom's line is there to cool and balance out something in your father's line. And you were the one who raised your hand to say, hey, I'll go down and work through the suffering part of the bloodline, the part of the bloodline that needs elevations. But here are the specific gifts. So it's more like a puzzle when you're choosing the lines that you're going to incarnate in. It's a little bit of a, a jigsaw puzzle. That's why it's a community that comes together before any soul incarnates to say, OK, you're going to go down there and you got to fix this. You got to stand up for this. You got to break this. You got to break that. And to help you do that, here are the gifts. As an example, I'll, I'll use me as an example, Baba and, and the audience. So I have one bloodline that is extremely suicidal, has a lot. That they're very intuitively, a lot of priests, a lot of artists, but it's a lot of mental illness on that line, right, that I'm constantly working with. But my mom's line, them is some resilient ass people like they just they like a tree trunk right so when i'm coming down here and i'm trying to break this suicidal like my my paternal uh grandmother and my paternal great grandmother i don't know past that 
they both died catatonic in a hospital, right? So to counteract that, I got this other bloodline that's so resilient, like they got a drinking problems and stuff like that too, but they just, they just like, it doesn't matter what oil y'all throws at that line. They just don't give up. They live into their nineties, you know? So these two energies that are, t that I'm balancing together, the resilient bloodline is helping me counteract the catatonic states that I can sometimes go in. So you got to, this is why working with your ancestors becomes super important because when you know what they dealt with and you also know the gifts that reside in those lines, then that helps you be like, all right, <laughs> all right, I see that I'm dealing with this, but who do I need to call on? I'm calling on my grandma, Kali, who was resilient. I'm calling on these uh, resilient loving ancestors that are going to help me heal this mental illness on the other line. So we got to really spend time in these next uh, 12 months, guys, really not necessarily ringing the bell and burning the money, but you need to start asking questions. You need to start channeling your ancestors. You, you need to start sitting down with them and asking what gifts did you have that you want to be expressed through me, Baba? I don't know how to express that any more, any better than you. Uh, yes, that's uh, what we definitely need to do because they're there for us and we should be there for them. The offerings, like you said, the war, the libations, they are exchanges of energy. Uh, there is an energy requirement for whatever they do in their world, and there's an energy requirement for whatever you do in this world. So your ancestral altar is a point where you can exchange and help. They're going to help you. Your ancestors want to help you anyway, but they just want you to know that it's, it does cost something. It costs them energy to travel in the spirit world, to do what they've got to do. There's no telling how many demons they got to fight on in your behalf. They'll do it whether you uh, are aware of them or not. They'll help you whether you, you, you work, you so-called worshiping them, which they don't ask for. They don't, they don't, they're not asking for that. They yeah, do so you improve your behavior. Right. They do <laughs> like for exchange of energy which shows that you are aware that uh, it's not hocus pocus and, you know, clap your hands and something happens. You, you always have to remember you have for you. If you want something, you don't get something for nothing, even in this world and in that world. They have to put up a cost for it but they're the ones willing to do it. That's why they're your uh, ancestors and your family members. They're willing to go to bat. They'll, they'll pay the cost themselves. If they're not, if you're not paying the cost for helping through energy offerings or whatever you're looking for, gladly they'll do it often. But sometimes it could be, it could be a strain. They just want, want you to know. I say. And I want to also hit on one thing, too, for all of the people who, you know, think that this is dead ancestors and ancestors is evil. And then we'll move over to um, the relationship part that comes out of this Odoo. Uh, Baba hit on it earlier. That, to me, when people speak like that, it just shows their consciousness still within the third dimension. As we are understanding and we all were born in a time where we have access to science. OK, and science, um, religion and, and spirituality should not override science. It should be an extension of science. It shouldn't be. Well, I don't care what science, uh, science says. My tradition says this. I think traditions have, have has to evolve as science becomes more evolved, right? We know now, thanks to quantum physics, that energy does not go away, okay? On Monday was my birthday, and I hit 51 years old on Monday. And I will tell you that it, I learned this in kindergarten. So this ain't even really new science. 
is that energy cannot be created and it cannot be destroyed. Once source energy calls out a ray of itself and, and that ray takes on a persona within the physical body, you are again, not the physical body. You are that which animates the physical body. So when this vessel goes back to the earthly mother, the spirit that resided in the physical body doesn't go away. It just changes its state. It just goes from water to gas to solid, right? It just melts down and evaporates. And then it becomes a part of consciousness, the great consciousness. Even Carl Jung talked about this, talked about the racial consciousness. Scientists do not understand where consciousness comes from. They're still trying to figure out what where do thoughts come from and you know who's driving the thoughts and how do you know this and how can you feel when this person is coming around you and to ignore that would be to decide to stay within 3d consciousness so as we're transitioning over to the relationship part of this odu i cannot express this year how much it is important for you i i baba for the last my last couple of sessions have been people that came to you and i and i love that i was like well how did you hear about me it's like well i saw you and baba shola together and i had an ifa reading with baba shola and now i want some help with my ancestors and i, I think that's just really a beautiful partnership so if you want to get your ifa reading you can get to uh, at 5416 on IG, as you see on the screen, then sit with your Ifa reading and then come to me and let's work with your ancestors to how they're trying to assist you in getting to your destiny. I think that's just a beautiful way of uh, how you can leverage this partnership between Baba Shola and myself within this show. But this is the year, guys. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid of your gifts. Don't let the Western consciousness, you know, get you to believe that it's evil to hear, that it's evil to be able to feel, you know, just don't get caught up in that. So everybody tap into their ancestral gifts because over the next 12 months, it really is going to be the way that you open up the path to your destiny. 